This is WJAR, Channel 10, Providence. And now, from Southern New England's leading news station, Patrice Wood. And Gary Lay. This is News Watch 10, the 530 Report. Good evening, and welcome to the new 530 Report. We'll be bringing you some of the day's top stories, plus some of the stories behind the headlines. Tonight, a teacher strike continues in Seekonk, and there's a resignation in the Reagan administration. Then each night, we'll have a special segment, a more in-depth look at a particular story. We call it Focus 10. Tonight on Focus 10, we'll be taking a look at the heroin problem in Providence. Police say the city is becoming a major distribution center. I-Team reporter Jim Terracani will have a look at how bad the situation is and what's being done to combat the drug dealers. First, a look at the day's news. Pope John Paul today left no doubt in anyone's mind. Halfway through his United States tour, the Pope restated the Catholic Church's opposition to abortion and test tube fertilization. The Pope's comments came during today's visit to Phoenix, Arizona. He also condemned any form of euthanasia or mercy killing. Pope John Paul is also expected to smoke a peace pipe in his first ever meeting with American Indians. They want the pontiff to canonize a Mohawk woman. Closer to home, Seekonk teachers plan to picket tonight's school committee meeting. Today, the teachers went door to door handing out leaflets, comparing their wages to those of surrounding Rhode Island schools. The teachers, now in their second day of the strike, are looking for help from the public. We feel that the best way to educate the community as to what we don't have is to let them see that in writing. And I think a lot of the community is unaware that our benefits are at the state that they're at. Um, we have heard this from the community, that they were unaware that we don't have a lot of the things they assumed we did. No new talks are scheduled, and union members say that they will not go back to work without a contract. The school committee says that it will not negotiate unless the teachers return to their jobs. The Coventry school system this year is implementing a busing program to alleviate school overcrowding. But the problem is meeting with resistance from a group of parents who don't want their kindergarten age students bussed for an hour. Newswatch 10's Diana Kelsch reports that the parents' opposition is causing the school committee to reconsider. But what's really needed is a long-term solution. The busing was to start today for the eight students, but after the parents appealed to the State Department of Education, the move was put on hold for a week. The parents say they don't want their children riding the bus for an hour, switching teachers and classrooms just because the town hasn't planned ahead. They're breaking up the neighborhood and the sibling being broken up. They'll be on the bus for an hour to this other school. So I have three different children in three different schools, and where do I divide my time? I don't think it's fair. I don't think they should be splitting them up and um, sending them to you know, other schools when there's plenty of room right at Washington Oak. The situation only illustrates what is a long-standing problem in Coventry. Schools aren't located in growth areas, and students must be juggled to avoid class overcrowding. Superintendent Raymond Spear says he's sympathetic to the parents' concerns, but keeping the students at Washington Oak Elementary School will mean violating the teacher's contract. And Spear says what really are needed are long-term planning and spending to solve the problem. The first need uh, is the, the availability of more classroom space, more pr appropriately located in the community. That's, that's the first thing. At least for this week, the students will remain here at the Washington Oak School. Next week, the school committee will be taking a vote to decide if there are any other options other than transferring the children. Diana Kelsch, Newswatch 10, Coventry. The highest ranking woman in the Reagan administration is stepping down. Transportation Secretary Elizabeth Dole announced she'll resign her cabinet post to campaign for her husband, Robert Dole. The Kansas senator is expected to announce soon that he'll seek the GOP nomination for president. Mrs. Dole says it was a tough decision. Her husband calls her probably the greatest resource in his campaign. The Baby M case is back in court. A lawyer for surrogate mother, Mary Beth Whitehead, was before the New Jersey Supreme Court today. Whitehead is now arguing surrogate parenting exploits women and hurts children. She's seeking to overturn a lower court decision. That ruling granted custody of the baby she bore under a contract to the natural father and his wife. It's a race against the clock for the United Auto Workers and the Ford Motor Company. A midnight strike deadline is quickly approaching. Both sides are still talking, but both can see there's a long way to go before an agreement is reached. A walkout would be the first against Ford in more than a decade. 
Well, if you have a hole in your roof, you probably found it this weekend. Gary Lay is standing by with a weather forecast. Today turned out to be a nice day, huh, Gary? It sure did, Patrice. And if you do have a hole in your roof, you probably have about this much water <laughs> in your basement. I'm sure. Because we had anywhere between two and four inches of rain from the storm that moved through yesterday. Fortunately, our Saturday was all right, and it's nice outside now. The cloud bank is to our east. east. Lots of clear skies across the area, and that's bringing temperatures up. It blossomed them up this afternoon into the upper 70s, a really nice day, 78 at Logan, 77 at the airport, and no small craft advisories in effect. Now for tomorrow and tonight, everything looks just fine. We've got a big fair weather system that'll float overhead, give us lots of sunshine during the day tomorrow, and again, very pleasant temperatures in the 70s. But this weather front and this little storm system will come scooting east on Wednesday, and that could bring back the threat of some showers. Let's check that forecast. Here's how I see it for the remainder of the night. Clear with some locally dense ground fog. 50 in the suburbs to 60 here in the city. For tomorrow, look for lots of sunshine, a pleasant day with light breezes, temperature between 72 and 78 degrees. Well, because now's the time of the day where we have that hustle and bustle of auto activity, rush hour traffic, we're going to include a rush hour traffic report as a part of our 5.30 show. And to bring you that report tonight is Allison Kaplan. Thanks, Gary. The roads are looking as good as the weather right now, doing pretty well. Early in the afternoon, we had some breakdowns on 95 South, but there are no major delays at this hour. 95 North has got moderate traffic, 195 West heavy over the Washington Bridge, but you've got clear sailing on 195 East towards Seekonk and Barrington. With the Traffic Watch, I'm Allison Kaplan for News Watch 10. Back to you, Patrice. Thank you, Allison. Still to come on the 5.30 report, our in-depth Focus 10 segment is next. Tonight, just how bad is the heroin problem in Providence? Well, Patrice, authorities say Providence is becoming a main distribution point for the illegal heroin trade. I'm Jim Terracani. We'll have that story when the 5.30 report continues. Heroin dealing in Providence, how much of a problem is it? In our Focus 10 report tonight, our I-team discovers the problem is getting so bad, some authorities believe it could lead to violence in a certain part of the city. I-team reporter Jim Terracani is live in Elmwood with the results of his investigation. Jim? Well, Patrice, it's here in the Elmwood section of the city where police say heroin dealers have infested the neighborhood. And authorities now say that Providence is becoming a main distribution point for the illegal heroin trade. We should caution you that some of the language you're going to hear in this story might be offensive to some people. While children play innocently on one side of this Providence street in the Elmwood section of the city, alleged heroin dealers conduct their business on the other side. The I-team spent a day on surveillance with two Providence narcotics cops from the Special Investigation Bureau. We hid on the third floor of this apartment. The alleged drug dealers were in the apartments below us. We watched as the alleged drug dealing took place. This woman, now a fugitive from police, would take a customer's order and money, walk into the apartment, get the heroin, and deliver it. Police say this man was the alleged main dealer in the apartment house. After witnessing many alleged drug deals, search warrants were obtained, police support teams were called in, and the cops made their move. Get him, get him, get him. Yeah. Hey, sit down, sit down. Police, police, please. Shit! As police were searching the apartment, the man who had been handcuffed ran away handcuffs and all, with $2,000 of alleged drug money in his hands. But after a brief chase, he was captured and the money was recovered. After a thorough search, police found their evidence, heroin and cash in a wall in a closet. Okay, each one of these packages here contained 50 glassine packages of heroin. These particular, uh, this type of heroin is bagged here in, in, in the state of uh, Rhode Island and more than likely Providence, maybe probably even in this house just by the way that it's packaged. Despite all the publicity about AIDS, people are still shooting up more than ever. Providence police figures show that 300 arrests for heroin dealing have been made in the last six months. That's double the heroin arrests made in all of last year. And heroin use is rising rapidly. Health department figures show that in the last six months of 1986, there was a 109% increase in heroin abuse reports. Our investigation shows that various ethnic groups dealing in heroin have moved into Providence from New York City, making our capital city a major distribution point for the highly addictive drug, 
which could lead to bloodshed on the streets. So is this neighborhood have a potential of flaring up into a uh, bloodbath? Yes, it has. Uh, when two or three different drug factions uh, argue over uh, customers or over turf, it's potential trouble, serious trouble. Tamburini says users from nearby Massachusetts are buying their heroin in Providence. The DA in New Bedford agrees. Yeah, there's evidence that uh, it's coming from Providence. Um, it always has come from Providence, except it was never a major problem in terms of large amounts from Providence. Dottie Black has been spearheading an effort in the neighborhood to chase the drug dealers away. Night marches by residents have drawn attention to the problem. Just how bad is it? Well, it's bad enough that it's in trench just about the whole area and we've been holding a series of meeting and marches and different activities to try to combat the problem but putting drug dealers behind bars in rhode island is not easy the cops are doing their job making the arrests but there's such a great backlog in our court system the alleged dealers like the ones you saw busted in this story post bail and are back on the streets the next day it's frustrating for the cops and for the residents and kids who have to live in a neighborhood infested with illegal drug dealing. About $8,000 worth of heroin was confiscated during this one raid. And along with the cash the police found, the entire haul for just one day's raid, about $15,000. Patrice? Jim, why should the average person be concerned, someone who has never had any contact with drug dealers? Well, Patrice, the typical heroin addict can spend up to $1,000 a week to support their habit. Now, where do they get that money? Oftentimes, they have to turn to crime, like breaking into your car and stealing your radio, or breaking into your home and stealing valuables so they can fence that material to get the instant cash that they need. So, yes, indeed, Patrice, illegal heroin dealing does have an effect on the average citizen. Most people can relate to that. Thank you, Jim. Most of the nation's top high school students are saying no to drugs. That's according to the 18th annual survey of high achievers. The poll also finds that most of the students also stay away from sex. And the majority think President Reagan is doing a good or excellent job in all areas but foreign policy. Coming up on the 530 Report, Health Check reporter Kathy Ray will have the latest health news concerning us. And the green grocer has the tip of the day. This week marks the kickoff of the American Heart Association Food Festival, and we'll tell you more about it later on. This day in history. Seven years ago today, the Ku Klux Klan held a recruitment rally in the normally quiet eastern Connecticut town of Scotland. It lasted two days. There were minor skirmishes, but no major outbreaks of violence. Educating people about ways to stay healthy is one goal of Newswatch 10, the 530 report. Health Check reporter Kathy Ray joins us live from our newsroom with the latest in health news today. Kathy? Patrice, we begin Health Check News this Monday with a word of caution. A Johnston police think someone may have tampered with some of the products at the Cumberland Farm store at 1180 Atwood Avenue on Sunday. They think that products purchased between 8 and noon yesterday may be suspect. Products sold in cardboard or plastic containers. Canned and bottled products are not involved. The police ask you to return any suspect items to them and, of course, call the state health department at 277-2749 with complaints of any illness from the possible contaminated items. In other health check news, keeping your heart healthy should be on the minds of all Americans this week as the American Heart Association celebrates its third annual food festival week. Now, things to look for include displays at area grocery stores, heart healthy menus and recipes at area restaurants, even some free blood pressure testing. The festival runs September 13th through the 19th. And one person very concerned about keeping us all healthy is the newest member of our Health Check team. His name is Dr. Dean Adele, and tonight he joins us with tips on how to lower cholesterol the natural way. These common grocery store items has just been found to have a remarkable property. In addition to what it's supposed to do, it can also lower your cholesterol. What is it? Well, the laxative Metamucil. In addition to regulating your bowel movements, a new study found that it can lower your cholesterol level by about 15%. Why should a laxative do all that? Well, it shouldn't be any surprise if you look at the label, because Metamucil, like many other similar preparations and brands, is made from a fiber that's derived from the husks of psyllium seeds. And we already know that there are many natural fibers that will lower cholesterol. It's just that a concentrated solution like this makes it easier. A standard dose of a psyllium seed product is the equivalent to four oat bran muffins or four bowls of oatmeal, which we already know can lower cholesterol. 
After eight weeks on Metamucil, some patients still weren't wild about the taste and texture, but none of them reported any significant side effects. So Metamucil joins a long and growing list of things that can lower your cholesterol, like carrot juice and oat bran. Add to that some healthy food and a little exercise, and you've got a recipe for lowering your cholesterol without drugs. I'm Dr. Dean Adele. And Dr. Adele will be reporting Health Check News with me every Monday and Wednesday right here on the 530 Report. Patrice? Kathy, what kinds of stories can we look forward to? Well, I'll be covering all the local breaking health items, and then Dr. Adele, gosh, she has a wide range of things, everything from varicose veins to kids and, and seat belts. So it should be interesting. All right. Thank you very much, Kathy. Well, as Kathy told us, there's a lot of attention being paid to having a healthy heart this week. Our diet can play a crucial role, says green grocer Joe Carcioni. In his regular feature, he suggests that we take a good, close look at how our diet relates to a healthy heart. Ladies and gentlemen, today marks the kickoff of the American Heart Association's Food Festival, which will be celebrated this week in over 11,000 supermarkets throughout the United States. The theme for this week is, it's high time to lower cholesterol. And of course, folks, when you're talking about lowering cholesterol, you're certainly going to have to eat foods that are low in cholesterol. Well, look, folks, you have to go to your fresh fruit and vegetable department. Fresh fruits and vegetables do not contain any cholesterol whatsoever. And not only that, they contain less than 1% of all of the fat that is available in foods. But of course, you're not going to only eat fruits and vegetables. You're going to have to eat a balanced meal. And when you do so, you're going to have to find out which of the foods that are high in cholesterol and high in fat or low in cholesterol and low in fat. Look, well, look what I have here, folks. I have three valuable informative leaflets that you should have. Here's the American Hearts Association's diet. Right over here, I have something that's very, very valuable. It's put out by the United States Department of Health and Human Services. It's three pages, facts about blood, cholesterol, everything that you should know. And not only that, folks, we have here 14 questions on how to determine whether you have a healthy habit, a healthy heart or not. Here's the questions, here's the answers. If you'd like to have these three valuable documents, kindly send me a self-addressed business size envelope with 39 cents worth of stamps. Mark the outside heart, and I'll be very happy to send it to you. This is Joe Carcioni, your greengrocer, with your tip for the day. For more information, you can write for the pamphlets, send a self-addressed business size envelope to Heart, care of WJAR-TV, 111 Dorrance Street, Providence, Rhode Island, 02903. Be sure to include a business-sized, self-addressed envelope. The Green Grocer, brought to you by Almax. The 18 really knows it's tough. Let's now check in with Doug White to see what's coming up tonight at 6. Doug is in the newsroom with details. Doug? Patrice, a housing plan of the future was announced today in Washington. We'll see how that might affect the city of Providence and other communities in the state of Rhode Island. Consumer reporter Sylvia Gambardella will look into some problems with some possibly dangerous fire extinguishers which were found in our area. And progress is moving in. Problem is, a 200-year-old tree is standing right dead in the way. As Watch 10's Frank Somerville will tell us who is winning that battle. Kathy and I will have all those stories. Gary Lay will have a look at the forecast. Frank Carpano, all the sports, tonight at 6. Patrice. All right, thank you, Doug. Also something you probably don't want to miss tonight, tonight at 8, Channel 10 will be taking an in-depth look at Narragansett Bay. The one-hour program entitled Narragansett Bay, A Friend's Perspective, examines the bay over the years and looks ahead to the future. It talks about how Rhode Island's personality is shaped by the body of water extended from, extending from Newport to Providence. That's tonight at 8, right here on WJAR-TV. There's still more to come tonight. When we come back, reporter Pam Thompson will have another one of our 5.30 feature reports, tonight's entertainment report. Family Ties' Alex Keaton has a new girlfriend. We'll meet the lucky lady coming up. People in the news. Providence Journal publisher Michael Metcalf is in critical condition following an accident over the weekend. Metcalf suffered head injuries after he fell from his bicycle. He was riding near his home in Westport yesterday. The 54-year-old publisher was taken to St. Anne's Hospital, where he underwent two hours of surgery. A special tribute was held to remember actor-director John Huston over the weekend. Just a few weeks after John Huston's death, a tearful tribute was held by those who admired him in Hollywood. Among those attending the memorial were his daughter Angelica, Robert Mitchum, Jack Nicholson, and Lauren Bacall. Here's a record that's bound to be a hit on the charts. There's a song out that spoofs Colonel Oliver North. 
The author is hoping the Marine Colonel won't take it personally. Mitch Ryder says his new song, Good Golly, Ask Ollie, does not mean he has no respect for the North, for North as a soldier. The song features new lyrics to the tune of Ryder's 1966 hit, Good Golly, Miss Molly. 23-year-old actress Courtney Cox is quickly becoming the envy of countless females all over the country. She's playing Alex Keaton's new girlfriend in the top-rated show, Family Ties. Yes, that means she gets to spend a lot of time with male idol Michael J. Fox. But as entertainment reporter Pam Thompson tells us, such a role isn't all that new to Cox. When Courtney Cox was 20 years old, she was plucked out of obscurity and placed squarely in the limelight when she was chosen to be Bruce Springsteen's dancing partner in his video, Dancing in the Dark. Then she got a leading role on the short-lived TV show, Misfits of Science. She considers herself very fortunate. I think that I was totally lucky for the Bruce Springsteen video. Who knows? I can't dance. I meet Brian De Palma. I'm from Alabama. I don't know anything. Here I get this video and that takes me off. That was luck. I think Misfits... Um, I did an okay reading, but you know, come on, I, I'd studied, but I'd never worked in front of a live, you know, a camera before. But now, with some acting lessons and several film and TV roles under her belt, Courtney feels she's better prepared for her most recent lucky break, the part of Lauren Miller, Alex's new love. We were opening up emotionally to each other. Things got a little out of hand. It happens all the time. Lauren, if that happens all the time, you're going to be the most popular psychologist in Ohio. <laughs> Courtney says she was so nervous filming this first episode that she forgot a line, but Fox knew exactly what to do. I was going to say something to the family, and all of a sudden I completely forgot what I was going to say, and I just said, look at the audience, I said, I can't remember my line. And he said, now Courtney, I told you not to do that. He takes me out and like starts hitting the door as if he's beating me. He's, like, he's funny. The audience loves when someone messes up, and he really like takes it to the hilt. When she isn't working, she likes to ride her motorcycle or play the drums. And in real life, she does have a boyfriend. But contrary to rumors, it isn't Michael J. Fox. Their romance is for TV only. Thank you, Miss Miller. You're welcome, Mr. Kiss. This is Pam Thompson reporting. And that's it for us at 5.30. Doug White and Kathy Ray are next with Newswatch 10's 6 o'clock report. I'm Patrice Wood. I'll see you tonight at 11.